All right, I want to explain my build for what we did for this 24 foot box trailer. This is a eight and a half by 24. This is the first trailer we ever ordered. This was something that we had had probably seven other trailers in the past, ranging from eight by or six by tens on up to this size. This is the best we've had so far. We really like it. It works out good for us, but this is the fifth year we've owned the trailer, and this is the fourth rebuild we've done on it. So we figured out what worked and what didn't. So we tried to make this last one our last build we're gonna do for this trailer. Um, we really like the style. It's an Empire. It is from Douglas, Georgia. It is good for what we do, and we're, we're really pleased with it. I've had no trouble with the trailer whatsoever. So I'll give you a quick walk around, and we'll show you what we have. I will show you some worthy upgrades because some of the stuff we've done, I haven't seen yet. Some of it we follow and do the same things everybody else does. First upgrade, buy an electric jack. You won't regret it. These things are about 150 bucks worth the money. Amazon, eBay is where I buy a lot of my stuff just because I can get it cheaper. I hate to say it. Sometimes you can. I can't buy it local and save that kind of money. Spare tire can go outside. Doesn't have to go inside and be in your way. I've got mine anchored through the wall with a couple of big pieces all through it. My power hookup. It's just a simple plug-in style 110 outlet. I run mine off an extension cord. I've seen some guys run on hose reels. It's a great idea. Just didn't really want to sacrifice the space for hose reel. So we're just going to use this. Next worthy upgrade, digital keypad. Simple. Eh, I'm gonna say 60 bucks. Run a deadbolt, plug them in. Takes you about five minutes. No big deal to run to do these, put them in. Run on AA batteries. Batteries last about four or five months at a time. You can access it with a key if the battery does go dead, or you can open up the rear door and access it through there. Okay, this is the more important spot, so we'll show you what we have. Coming up on the rear of the trailer, on the left-hand side, everything you see fits in this slot and only this slot. Lower section here, lower two pack, um, little small platforms, six foot ladder, uh, definitely a extension ladder, because small stuff, we only do cabinet work. We don't get into a whole lot of custom remodels, um, full demo stuff. So everything we do is very basic. We know what we need when we come into a job. Uh, kneeling pad, small small set of um, dollies, and two of regular Bora style saw horses. We like the Boras. These are actually the Husky brand. They're the equal. Um, cabinet maker's third arm. We really like these things. They're simple. They work good. Pretty easy. Pretty easy to use. And each of the levels only fit in the given level spot. Nine inch, one foot, two foot, place for a frame and square, four foot and six foot. And then on the far left side, because we build cabinets, of course, we got to have places for plywood occasionally. got to have places for finished island panels. So this will hold a four by eight sheet of MDF. We don't use much MDF, but MDF is 49 inches when regular cabinet plywood is 48. And it's three inches wide, so we can actually hold several sheets there. Right now, it's just holding a little extra step stool we had tossed in the trailer. Okay. And on top of the box, we keep some little variety extra stuff, nail screws, hardware, whatever. And back of the box, I ended up with a little random cubby, so I held a fire extinguisher. This actually just kind of wedges in there. Hadn't felt like yet. We're real pleased with how it worked. And instant spot for a blower. And you see some various stuff we keep. Clamps. Top of this box is actually for, go back here, actually for trim, because most of my prefab cabinets come with eight foot long trim. So this was an eight foot long box. But at the very top, you can see the slot in the rear. That's actually for my custom stuff because my custom stuff can do 12, 14, 15 foot long trim. So I just slide it through and pick it up and it'll fit out the back. Okay, on all of our cabinet jobs that we go in, we have to take in both these sets of roller, roller cabinets. These work out great, but we take in these every single time. In fact, a couple more boxes behind me will go with us, but we have to have these every single job. Packouts are good good items. We really like them. They're super mobile and super tough. We've never broke broke one with what we're doing. The only thing we didn't like about them is the roller cabinets roll around, but they roll around. They don't really stop in place. So to fix that, all we've done, we ran a screw to the top of a piece of string. You can hear it actuating that. 
So, just a simple gravity latch. Nothing special to it. And that will lock into these. So now whenever it's locked in place, we go down the road and that's not going anywhere. We're happy with that. Never had them come undone. We've been using that for a long time and it's super easy. Out of the way, didn't take up any space. Then continuing on the left side of the trailer, which would be the driver's side, we have two workbenches. Each of these workbenches hold three sets of packout drawers and a couple of random boxes on top. We like the packout system, but we kept noticing every time you needed something, you had to move half the packout boxes you had to get to the one on the bottom. So the drawers are worthy upgrade. They're kind of expensive. They're running you about $175 for most of them, up and down from that price. Certainly worth, certainly like it, certainly worth it. And then coming on around toward the front on the Vinos, which is about two and a half feet deep. Vinos is gonna have my extension cords, my light, my racks for my cleaning supplies, a couple of Hercules bags. Each of these has a purpose and only that purpose. You know, cleaning supplies. You got one here for ratchet straps and towing parts. Um, that one's empty to be set up with tools. Um, backpack, it holds my t-shirts and whatnot for my free customer stuff. All that stuff that customers love. They love anything free. You learn that when you're in business. And the bottom of this is a piece of four by eight plywood. It's only about three feet tall that holds up the workbench and holds up the back of the air compressor. Air compressor mounts in place. I've actually got it kind of hard plumb with a flexible extension cord that runs all the way back to the rear of the trailer. And now I've got access to have air, com air compressor lined anywhere I need it. And underneath of this, because it takes so many, we have blanket storage. I've loaned out one of the three trailers that we have and a bunch of our blankets because this is how much it takes. This is a 24 foot trailer and this will be full most of the time when we go to a cabinet job because it takes a whole lot of space. Like I said, cabinets aren't necessarily heavy. They're just bulky and they take up a lot of space and we have to arrange them, so to speak, and keep them to keep them from bumping into each other and getting scratched before we deliver them because we deliver our own. We don't have the luxury of having another delivery service to do it. And you see these ports here, one on the left, one on the right. That's actually so I can still access my turnbuckles that are on the floor or the big D-rings. Next suggested upgrade is finishing up your wiring. You see it come in through the trailer door, or through the trailer wall, to the extension cord. This is how I ran mine because this is what made the most sense for me. Coming in from outside, this is the only outlet in the whole trailer that's hot all the time. Whenever it's plugged into the extension cord, this is the only one that's plugged in all the time and hot. Coming up, I have mine set up to where it's running receptacles on one light switch and actual ceiling lights on the other. For ceiling lights, I ran six eight foot LED strip lights in series, come up, make a turn, go all the way down the trailer, make a turn, come back. When you're buying these type of lights, they come with two different type of terminal ends. One is an inch long stem, which is rigid, or a five inch long piece of wire that connects the two. We like the piece of wire in the trailer because it's going down the road and it's bouncing and going everywhere. We try to give it a little bit of flex, so we use the flex line instead. And we also siliconed in these terminals so that it makes a good solid connection. They don't really pop out and they're just plain zip tied to the top of the frame rails. Simple, simple upgrade, but we've learned what works and what doesn't. And this was something we had on our camper when we got rid of it. We kept it because it was super convenient. Runs a couple of lights, outlets, receptacles, got places charged on phone, iPad, whatever. And then coming up, back to our wiring. Receptacle and light on 110. Now, because yours truly is an idiot, I drove over an impact gun with CNC machine and broke the head off of it. So I just... Cut the bottom of the base off with a handsaw, extended the wires. And now I have an 18 volt wiring setup, runs on an 18 volt battery. So I have two circuits. This shut off the main 110 lights. So now I have an inside light switch that powers two LED style headlights, UTV lights, whatever you wanna call them. They face each other whenever you're parked in a parking lot or unhooked from anything and you don't have lights, I've always got a battery. This is an easy thing for me to hook up and I've got access to have enough light in here to see, maybe grab a tool, leave, whatever. 
And then I also have a set of lights on the outside, on the rear of the trailer, right above the ramp. So I can back into a parking lot, hook and unhook other stuff, have a little bit of light outside if we need to finish up a job. Makes it super handy. And then originally the truck came with a 12 volt hookup. So we're like the 12 volt just for when you're only hooked up a truck and maybe you don't have a battery. I don't know. It's never happened to us, but it can happen. And above the door, because it's kind of useless space, we went ahead and mounted a couple of spots here for brooms, squeegees, and you see what kind of information we have to leave ourselves. That note's for me, because I'm not exactly responsible on everything. And on the left side of the trailer, this is a mobile workbench. We bought this off of Amazon. I know I've told you I'm a cabinet builder and we could do a, we could have done this, but for making something mobile, buying a couple $40 casters, you know, 40, 50 bucks in casters on each side and a frame rail and a butcher block top, I'd have been $150, $200 in the project. I bought these for less than $200 on Amazon a piece. There's two here, one here and one there. We extended the backs of them with a piece of three quarter plywood, mended them together. Everything here is clear coat finish on everything. All the plywood you've seen, the rails, the front, counter workbenches, everything is all three quarter plywood. It's been sanded and pre-coated with lacquer, two coats. So it's all smooth. I don't expect it to splinter, chip, or anything like that. Both the chop saw and the table saw are all mounted flat and level to the top of the workbench here. Makes it a little easier. I can put in a piece of trim, make my cuts. Typically on a countertop or a cabinet job, I only need to make cuts three or four times. I'm not trying to make a dozen cuts or, or 50 or 100 cuts like you would trimming out a house or framing a house. It's just not our job. We don't necessarily need that mobility. So we try to cut everything in here. Of course, I've still got full actuation with my, with my saw. Both chop saw and table saw are mounted to a set of pack out tops and a set of pack out mounts. We did this for a couple reasons, because if we ever do have to take this thing out and put it on a miter saw, my miter saw has the male mount on the bottom, and we can flip that and put it on the other side as well. So we can put this on the other side of the Metabo brand miter saw stand, because it's a lot easier. We can do the same thing. This is... And like I said, all this stuff here is made to come out of the trailer. So this is something that's more important to me than anything else on the whole project. We occasionally will let our friends borrow our trailers. We'll have to help somebody move, have to load a car, truck. We've actually hauled my work truck in this trailer. But you can't do that if it's full of pack out boxes and workbenches. So everything in this trailer can come out in about 10 minutes. All of the pack outs, of course, come off of their mounts. Of course, this is just a mounted system. But underneath of each of these, this one doesn't have much anything heavy, so I'm only using three. Three countertop style workbench fold down hinges. These are awesome. Push the button here on the little white part, gives, takes the pressure off, and that will let you directly fold that flat to the wall. Whenever that's folded flat to the wall, this is all I have that's taken up inside of the trailer. So if it being 22 inches deep, now it's only an inch and a quarter deep because it folds flat to the wall. And this side here's got a lot of heavy stuff in it. So we put five on this particular one. And then on this side, you can see we've still got gravity latches. These work great. Pull in place, you hear it snap. And this will roll in and out of the trailer. Pop those, hold, the whole thing rolls in and out. I did it by myself minute minute and a half tops it takes nothing to roll this thing outside the only thing that does take some effort is the big old cabinet at the end because it's made out of three-quarter plywood and it's ridiculously heavy a lot heavier than it should be but it's strong enough we're not worried about it it's definitely going to take the beat and going down the road and it's held in place by four gravity latches as well and it only fits in one spot so whenever it gets in place and it locks in it's going to be there because i'm moving the whole trailer to be able to wiggle that. So I'm real pleased with how strong that is. We used two coats of regular oil-based paint. Took about two days to dry because I put them on there so thick. We literally didn't even use a paint tray. I just dumped out the paint on the floor in two straight lines and started spreading the paint around until I got it flat. 
the walls because we bought this trailer five years ago and just started throwing stuff in it and needed to use it right then. We didn't build any cabinets. We sanded all the walls and we re-cleared them with this previous build. We cleared them with lacquer, sanded and cleared in two coats. So it gives it a nice finish. You can clean it off. Nothing sticks to it too bad and it's easy to work with. Here's the lights I was telling you about earlier. These are the outside lights on the 18 volt battery. But I appreciate you taking a look. This is something we're very proud of. We're very excited about. We've seen all kinds of designs on there. We've seen the Ron Polk designs and some of the stuff we're jealous of, but it's just not for what we need it for. I needed something that I can be mobile with. I needed something I could take in and out quick and really works out good for us. But thanks for your time, guys. Good luck, be safe out there.